Riders, and welcome to another edition of The Flow. I am your host, Doc Rock, along with my awesome co-host. Everyone, it's Katie. That's my favorite part. I don't know why it cracks me up every time. <laughs> oh, we have awesome guests today, Case. Let's talk to folks about it. We sure do. So if you don't know Ian yet, you must be crazy. You need to you need to know Ian. Ian, I think, is probably one of the first people I met when I jumped aboard the Ecamm team, the e- into the Ecamm fam. And Ian actually has been podcasting for a, quite a long time. And he was the host of our, we did an entire podcasting series well before we ever launched the flow called the Podcaster Hour that Ian hosted. So I think I know, like, most of what I know about podcasting comes from either Doc or Ian, so it's great that we're going to be all all together today, but Ian Anderson Gray is here. You can find all of his stuff at uh, iag.me, right? I'm thinking so. Well, to bring him on. I had a moment a moment of blanking blanking out. Ian, you've got to let us know your website address, iag.me. That's it. That's the moment. one. All right. Okay, good. I had a moment of doubt. Well, I had a well moment done. of doubt. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is uh, also one of the first people I met when I started using Ecamm and went to the uh, very first leap. And I just remember I made a comment to him. I was like, oh, it's Notorious IAG. And he was like, what's that? <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, we can't be, we can't be friends. He's like, who is, he who is this guy? He doesn't know who Notorious B.I.G. is. And I was like, oh, God, I don't, I don't know about this guy. And then he said, but hey, I'm from Manchester. I was like, done. He's in. <laughs> that, was the end of that. <laughs> that was the end of that hate fest. <laughs> and it turns out he's an awesome cat to know. Like, Ian is literally one of the best. So. <laughs> Oh, and and huge congratulations to Ian because he just launched another podcast this week. So but before we jump in, you should just give us a minute to let us know about your newest podcast so we can all go over and listen. Yeah, thanks. Yes, it, well, you'd think you'd think just one podcast was enough, but I no. decided to <laughs> launch another one uh, as well. Uh, and it's all on it's all on ADHD. It's it's called Smart ADHD because a lot of people in the entrepreneurial space. Mm-hmm. Uh, ha- have ADHD and it's something that I was diagnosed at age 46 and had a big impact on me and I've learned loads but I, I'm not an expert so but the great thing about being having a podcast is you can invite all the experts onto your show and yeah. I've got some amazing experts so we're, we're, we're I mean I'm always fascinated with psychology and uh, learning and all that kind of stuff so it's for smart individuals with ADHD creatives entrepreneurs business owners and we're going to be going down that rabbit hole and uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be great fun. Yeah, I'm really excited to get I, and I love the logo. I think you've just done a great job with it. So I I definitely have it on my to listen list and I'm excited to see what you do with that one. <laughs> I would say my first question off the, the right off the top, Ian. So I, I'm so grateful that you came on and I, I, I last minute just had this moment because I was on your show recently, your other show, The Confident Life Marketing Podcast. And you've just recently changed your format. And I was like, oh, we should bring Ian on to talk about different, like the different kinds of podcasting formats and how you think it through. But before mm. we jump into all of that, I'd love to know how long you've actually been podcasting for. Because to me, it feels like oh. my whole journey, you've been there podcasting. So how long has it been? Well, I, I d- did have a podcast back in 2012. It was called The Social Media. I can't even remember what it was called. It was like Social Media news no that was it the seriously social news show oh, okay. and it was it's basically it was talking about all the the latest news in social media mm-hmm. but and I, I think i lasted about 28 episodes but the problem <laughs> i had was being a being a recovering perfectionist i edited it i researched I, it basically would take me like two days to do well not not quite but almost it felt like two days um and the, the issue with that was then I had to then do it next week. And the, the even bigger issue was that it was out of date by a week, you know, <laughs> a, a week later. So it wasn't really yeah. evergreen content. So when I when I launched my Confident Live marketing show podcast in 2019, I, want, I had a big focus on it being evergreen. I wanted it to be evergreen. I also wanted it to not just be a podcast. I wanted it to be a live show and a blog because I firmly believe we we all have different preferences with the way we consume content. And 
I actually really like reading blogs and I like listening to podcasts. Sometimes I like listening to uh, watching live shows, but I don't always have the time to do that. Or so I wanted to do all of that, and that's so that's what I did when I relaunched the, the show. I, I, I went with those three formats uh, for the first. 212 episodes or whatever it was i think uh it was all all done in those three formats yeah um i know and i i feel like when you first started the podcaster hour for us that was like one of the big takeaways because you and i are really similar in almost every aspect i feel, I feel like I'm also a recovering <laughs> perfectionist i also yeah. really love like being able to actually read through like blog posts and re and like consume a podcast episode through reading as well as listening and I'm you know yeah. constantly bouncing around so live shows actually tend to be difficult for me to watch all the way through unless I've like really like committed to sitting in the live chat and and engaging with people so I I hear you on that um and uh, yeah I and I'm definitely the person that's like oh I need to do better with editing which is why I love the <laughs> format that we that we do with this show because it forces yeah. us and forces me to not to like not have to hand that off and not, and not, well, not think and, about and, that which makes it easy and that that's that's the other reason what that's why i think i went with live I mean, well the first thing i was the whole show is about <clears throat> excuse me about how to be confident with live video but mm. It's the perfect antidote to recovering perfectionists because live video can't be perfect. It's just you have to turn up, you have to do it. <laughs> and it it was like a baptism of fire, really, because like I, I could have called myself the the um the reluctant live video guy. Like live video for me was not the natural place for me to go. Mm -hmm. But it but I'm so glad I did because I've learned it's I've I've had this real confidence journey. It's allowed me to produce content in a much better way. You've also got it. You've got to really think about the three different audiences as well when you go live. So <clears throat> you've got your replay audience because they get bored really easily if you start talking to like the the live people. Yep. But then, the, but you've got to think about the live people because the live people get really sad Shut if you up. don't talk to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And which is which, uh, and then if it's a podcast as well, you've got to think about the listeners because they can't see what's on the screen. But it's interesting that with my with my confident live show when I did do it live. I was getting, I was getting people watching it live and then listening to the podcast and then watching the the video or listening to the podcast and then watching the video or going back and forwards. It's really interesting. You kind of think that th those three audiences are are in different camps and and they just mm -hmm. consume that, but they don't. They and I'm sure that's the case with all of us. I mean, I, I think some of us will read blogs and then we'll pop over and listen to a podcast and maybe we'll watch something. So it's 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 good to have it in those different formats i think it's it's yeah, a it's absolutely. a triumph a, give, give the people what they want and meeting them where they are sort of situation because you're giving them the yeah. opportunities to find you in a way that works for them um it, i'm still trying to fight people off of this i'm a video person i'm an audio person like no you're not you're all of the above <laughs> that thing has screwed up so many people yeah. because there's people that die hard believe that even though there's thousands of papers that completely debunk that there's people that still believe that because it gives them an excuse to not be good at something and it's funny because you said um one of the things for instance you, were, you did your format on the you know confident situation which so many people google it's kind of crazy it's one of the most google things when it comes to a personality trait and the funny thing to me about confidence is it legit is a light switch and at some point in time someone gave you the switch and turned it off for you and you have never found the ability to turn it back on and then other people they were turned on a little bit too early and they can't find ways to turn it off when they need to, right? <laughs> I, I really, really, really believe it is a 100% binary thing. So growing up with the grandpa who, let's, I'll, I'll put it in British terms, he was definitely a Savile Road type cat. You know, my grandpa was clean, three-piece suit, hat, glasses, everywhere he went, he was flawless. And um, I remember I first kind of heard the word, I'm like eight or nine years old, and I, I remember asking my grandpa, like, um, what does it mean if someone says you don't have confidence? He goes, oh, they're just trying to hold you back because they're afraid that you're going to beat them. And I was like, what? Mm -hmm. And he was like, the person that told you that is telling you that because they don't want you to be better than them. So if they can scare you by making you think you're not good, then you they win. And I was like, well, how do I how do I get confidence? Can we like buy it or you know whatever? And he's like, no, you already have it. Just don't let anyone take it away from you. 
Imagine getting yeah. told that at eight or nine years old. And never, that's why I don't mean to be an a hole. I always trip out when people say, Oh, I don't have any confidence. I'm like, Yeah, you do. You just turn it on. Like, there's, it's not something you purchase. I don't think you need to train it. I don't think you just need to do it. Like, there really is, it is not a muscle. It is a binary situation. You need to turn it on and turn it off. Yeah. But a lot of people get it taken away from them from somebody and they have to find that root. And I was doing this workshop um, back when I was in this trainer trainer type situation and they had everybody like close their eyes and think about the voice find the voice Whoever turned it off for you and for most people it's way back and it's a parent or a grandparent That said something to you when you were a kid, which is why I tell all of my mm. my friends do not tell their kids They're shy that word just never even put it in their vocabulary because you will royally screw them Yeah, yeah, oh, it's, I mean that's that's all like so helpful stuff and <clears throat> I think it does tend to happen with with us at an earlier age and the older you get it the more you kind of like have that internal dialogue like oh you know you're 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 shy you 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 know good and a lot of it is the judging we don't want to be judged we're worried about mm -hmm. what people say to we're us we're worried about what we think was, yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i was talking with a a friend of mine and she was saying that she has this quite a, a big loud laugh and <sighs> she lovely. was with some people who with she didn't know and because she's quite an intuitive person, she just noticed like when she laughed for the first time, the, one of the the women there kind of flinched slightly, and ooh, and because she's intuitive, she then really she kind of retreated into herself and tried to kind of yeah. like subdue that side of it. And I think a lot of us do that. I remember doing that myself. I kind of I was worried about putting the real me forwards. It wasn't like I wasn't. It wasn't like I was not being authentic, but. I think that's the the problem is we're comparing ourselves to others and we're worried about being judged. And the only way is just to just to, as Doc says, to go live. It's mm -hmm. it might be that for some people, though, I do want to put this out for some people. The the struggles and the hurt from the past will be so strong that going live is not the best place for you. Like just mm -hmm. you, you need to kind of go on a slower journey. And, and obviously, I'm not a psychologist. Um, but, um, but, but, but what doc said though is so true. We do all have that confidence. It's just that we've unlearned it somehow and we, yep. we can learn it. We can relearn it. And so, and I do believe like for me, live video was part of that journey for me. You know, what's yeah. funny is if you go back and think, when was that first time in school where you got called to the blackboard or I don't know what you guys call it. We call it a blackboard here. <laughs> <laughs> chalk chalkboard um <clears throat> whenever you get caught to the blackboard and the first time you went up there and you didn't know what you were doing that might be the first time you unconfidenced yourself and didn't even know it right um you're super embarrassed yeah you, you didn't yeah, want to say you were wrong and you went up there and you just kind of made a butt out of yourself and the whole class laughed at you a lot of people have never recovered from that and they don't even remember that they've never recovered from that so yeah it's really funny how these things yeah. sort of all find find their situation so now going from doing a live show and um you know, just like you said, there's some people who are just not going to go live, right? No matter what we tell them, no matter how much we tell them, it's easier. <laughs> and, uh, oh, my God, Tommy posted this really epic clip from uh, Kelly and Mark, and their whole studio mm -hmm. went sideways live on air. It was super funny. They were getting, like, all kind of extra voices. Lights were doing all kind of weird stuff. And, you know, his thing was, even with billions of dollars of equipment, it can go crooked. Like, it just happens, yeah, right? Yeah, can happen. Um, yeah, I remember the Super Bowl a couple years back. <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. so how how would you uh, get someone who's on a recording train to sort of work out some of these kinks because they're just not going to go live? Well, the, you, you so like when they are they you talk about people who are worried about the tech going wrong and that's yeah. preventing yeah. them because even going that live? stops people. Well, I mean, you, just the recording side. Even if you're recording, like um, yeah. I feel still feel like some people are a little bit sort of in a in a funk because they're trying to figure out a system yeah. and obviously you've got the system down so regardless of live or recorded what would you say is the best way to you know start your system if you will yeah well i i, I think the getting getting good the good tools and, and gear in place is is certainly a really good start so like if you're trying if you're trying to go live or record on a computer that is just not fit for purpose, which is kind of what I was doing. Like back in 2016, I had this really old Dell laptop and I was I was firing up OBS Studio and it was just dying a death. And it just, it, it doesn't exactly 
fill you with confidence. And yeah. and then I was using software, other software. So this is this is all before Ecamm was a thing. And and I, I, and you, in order to to create a scene where you go live, you didn't you didn't just have to put the the webcam on. You had to put the microphone on. There was different layers. You had to put the the camera layer, and then you had to remember to put the microphone layer. And I remember going live and forgetting to put the microphone layer there, and so no one could hear me. Like, so like get software and a decent computer that's that that you can be confident in. But then really, it's it's a case of finding a finding um, people who are going to support you, like a team of people, like friends who are going to support you. You could go live, say in a Facebook group to begin with, with those people, just test it out. And I would say, just get, go go on with a, a friend and have a chat because that's ultimately that's what we're doing now. This, I so like, I, I remember. I'm going to show my age here. Like I remember Google Hangouts <laughs> on air. Google ha do, you do you remember Google Hangouts on air? Yeah. Yes, one yes. of my some of my first my first shows. Yeah. Like and and like I this is going to sound ridiculous. Some I was asked to go on. To a Google Hangout on air. This this was kind of, this was live video back in the day, and yeah. I was absolutely petrified. I, I look back yeah. at that Ian now, and I think, what what was going on in my head? I was what, just yeah, so was so. Enough, yeah. I was yeah. so so worried about being I don't know just making a mistake, but um, you've got you've got to start somewhere. And if you at the end of the day, what we're doing at the moment is we're just having a conversation. Just imagine that you are in a coffee shop somewhere having a chat, and that's kind of what it is. Um, so, and the best thing to, and I also think you need to kind of reframe the way you think about things going wrong, because actually, <laughs> I can't even believe I, I this has come to the, I, I've come to this point, but I, I'm really glad. I now actually like when mistakes happen. Same, yeah. For two, for two, for two reasons. First of all, it people, it, it has a you know as long as it's not horrendous, people people like that. It shows it shows your humanity. But second of all, it means I can, and maybe this is a recovering perfectionist thing, but it means I can kind of perfect my checklist and my processes. I can think, ah, oh, I forgot to do that. I need to remember that for next time, and I can put it in my list. Like I I I used to forget. What I, the last thing I always have this thing at the end of my podcast, like um, I'm going to forget it now, actually. But I always have this little <laughs> saying at the end. Yeah. And what I've, I find is when you press the go live button and when you're at the end. Often my brain just goes to mush because like there's something that happens with the go live button. It kind of enters your brain and you go, what, what do I say? Oh, I forgot my name. Uh, so I actually have that written down in front of me so that I don't forget like I don't, I don't usually forget my name, but uh, <laughs> I, so I have the beginning and the end, uh, and so so uh, I think so. What I'm going, so what I'm saying there is, you're you're not going to learn these things if you don't go live, um, and yeah. the and the other encouraging thing is look at look at other people's look at other people's first lives. Like I'm sure I don't know Doc whether yeah. your first ever live video is out there somewhere. Oh, yeah. We did, we it, shared it, we shared it uh, before and after, both Doc and I and a couple other people, okay. like our first so, and our most recent. Man, I'll you to talking find it trash. To, to I yeah, gotta find so, those, I know I have uh, screen caps of those Google Hangouts on air joints around somewhere. I'll pull those suckers out. Oh, yeah. Like, oh my God, they were funny. It, you right. just, look, he just said something. I want to make sure we keep this. <laughs> Listen, I want everybody to do this. This is going to be a task for you. Right now, in my show, this particular show, the first scene is the countdown, right? In many shows we do, the first scene is a countdown. On my personal show, I threw the countdown out a year and a half ago, would never bring it back, countdowns are dumb. <laughs> but make your first scene the freaking checklist. Yeah, that's actually a, yeah, really that's a good idea. idea. That's a good now idea. you have no choice <laughs> but to see it. Cause what a lot of us have done, I'll take the hit, have the checklist, <laughs> I've done it so many times. Oh, I got this, you know, but that's exactly yeah. how you leave your dang keys. Right. And yeah. many of the the men in the place, you know, I don't know how girls do it. Just men do. You go out and you go left pocket, right pocket, back pocket. And I'm going phone wallet keys. And then I do that real quick to the lights. And then I walk out the house. And now that is a motion. It happens <laughs> at the hotel. It happens anywhere. Left pocket, right pocket, back pocket, walk out. So you can barely forget your keys. Right. 
I think your first scene should be your dang checklist because my last scene is my mechanicals, my fonts, my colors, my size, you know, my audio settings. I actually have that written as my last scene and I teach that in the demo every Friday. So Neil, if you make that video before I make that video, Neil, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I, Neil, Neil just popped up in the chat. Neil will be right back. <laughs> Neil, He's working like, on it. Yeah. Man, I'm going to see Neil's video in like the next 30 minutes. I'm going to be mad. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I, <laughs> Thank you, IAG. I, I want to talk about, because I love, I love the, the live conversation, but I think it, it fits us into really nicely because Ian, you made a shift recently in your show. So in the Confident Live Marketing Podcast, where you were doing it really kind of similar to our format, where it's a, a live, a live to tape format and you have a live audience and then you were editing and kind of and then releasing it at a later point. Um, so why why the change and what what is the change so that everyone kind of understands where you are now and what motivated yeah. it? Yeah, so well, first of all, what the change is. So I used to I used to go live once or twice a week. And that would allow me to get a good batch of maybe five or six, um, because the, the although I was going live twice a week or one to two times a week, the podcast was once a week. And I just okay. occasionally, like being British, like I, not, I like to have holidays and you know vacations <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. So, like I need some time off. So that that was really important. But also, like I was demonstrating live video on how to go live and the benefits mm -hmm. of that, and so. Uh, but this the, the switch now is that I'm go I'm switching into seasons. So the season at the moment we're focusing on tech and gear, and we're going behind the scenes. So it's great to go behind the scenes in, in your studio, Katie. Uh, yeah. And uh, we're all I'm also keeping them really quite short. I'm uh, aiming to keep them about twenty to twenty five minutes, whereas before they were kind of like an hour long, and sometimes even longer than that. Uh, and so the, so now what I'm doing is I'm really making them very, very focused. Um, I'm not, we're not, I, I introduced the guest, but then we're going straight into the questions and we're keeping them really, really short and punchy like that. Now, before I go into the, the, the why, I, I want to say that I did have so, a little bit of kind of reticence about this because I was thinking, look, I'm, my show is the confident live marketing show and I'm not going live anymore. And I remember talking to people about this and they said, look, you've gone live for 212 episodes. I think you've demonstrated that you know your stuff about live video. <laughs> I think yeah. it's okay to, to do this. And so they, so once, 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 once we got, got over that, they, uh, let, um, uh, the, the reasons for me doing this are because I felt that First of all, I needed a change, and I think that's important. When you feel that like you want to ch do a, do something different, I wanted a new challenge. Second of all, I feel that my audience wanted something; they they just wanted the meat, and they wanted yeah. they wanted something short and short, not necessarily short and sweet, but a little bit like that. And also, and I'm going to be I'm just going to say this honestly. Live video is tiring for me. If I do too much, yeah. I've got to I've got to balance that. Now, my my goal with this is that we're going to do the weekly shows, uh, podcasts, but I'm going to do monthly lives, and my lives are going to focus not so much on the content, on the the kind of the pillar content, teaching people about stuff. The 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 lives are going to be more community focused, where I'm going to mm -hmm. answer questions live and and. It's we're not kind of worried about this becoming a um, a, re a recording afterwards, um, so I'm separating it out that way, and uh, it also allows me to not worry about have to do it at a specific time with guests and things like that. Now, don't get me wrong, I still see uh, big advantages in doing it the way you guys are doing it and the way I was doing it before. I'm not knocking that format. But yeah. I think at this stage in in my podcast, in my show, this feels the right thing to do. Um, and also, it's just, it's in seasons, as I said. So with the season at the moment, we're doing studio and gear. The next season, so we'll have a little gap, which is okay. It's okay to have gaps. That's the other thing that I'm, I'm telling myself because <laughs> before <laughs> I felt it has to go on and on and on. Um, but then the season after that, we're going to be focusing on communication and confidence. So it's focusing on that. Uh, and then who knows what's going to happen after that. And the cool thing about this is I'm, I've am i set up a whole process 
I use Notion for this, and we've got a whole process for every single element of the production and the post side of things. But as you as you just said at the beginning, I've launched this other podcast, which is a huge undertaking. But all I needed to do is just copy those processes, tweak them a little bit because there are some differences. But again, with the with the um, Smart ADHD podcast, it's very similar. I'm doing twenty to twenty five minute episodes. There's one slight difference though. So we're doing those small episodes, but I'm also going to be doing uh, very long form episodes as well uh, because. The short episodes are going to be with experts uh, focusing on addressing a myth or talking about something like that. But I'm also going to be interviewing um, entrepreneurs, creators, and hearing their story. And this is going to be just sitting back, talking, long form, going into yeah. detail, conversation. And I'm seeing this kind of trend. Um, we see this We see this on YouTube. Some of, the, some of the videos, some of the podcasts that people are listening to, they're like two to three hours long. Whatever you think about Joe Rogan, his podcast is like epic in terms of the length of each episode and people, yeah. Yeah. the people who listen to it love it. And there's a lot of other ones like that. And yeah. so I, I want to go deep and it's a long form, but I also want to go deep in the, the shorter form as well and do both. So uh, that's a kind of a, a long answer, but that's the great thing no, about I doing it this way. I think it's great. And I, I, I wanted to bring you on because I know that in particular on this show, you know, obviously we have a really set format. It's one that we, you know, one that we believe in. It makes sense for us as Ecamm, as representatives of Ecamm and, you know, talking about the tool and what's possible. But I, I love that you have been at it for so long and you had a really set process and you were able to think through what was best for you, what was best for your audience, how to achieve those goals and, and willing to make that and willing to make that change and then be able to evaluate and go from there. Cause I think a lot of people get stuck with I've committed to this and I, and now I'm, now I'm going and maybe it's not working the way they want it to, or they're hearing feedback. And it's, I feel like it's hard to kind of make some of those bigger changes yeah. and pivots and it's easy to second guess ourselves in doing it. So I know here we say a lot, like just start, get better as you go. And, but I don't, I want to remind everyone that like getting better as you go, once you start, doesn't mean that it's just little tweaks. Sometimes it might be like pausing for a second, you know, reevaluating everything and making a really big change. Yeah. And that's okay as long as you're still moving forward, right? I, as long as you're still kind of keeping keeping the momentum going. So I and, and I just I just wanted to say one thing. So like if I went back and had my time again, I'd still do it the way I did. I think yeah. starting with live video for me was the best thing because it just yeah. got me over that perfectionism. It allowed me to, particularly at the time, uh, it just allowed me to connect much more. It's it's easier, I think, to build an audience with live because yeah. you're yeah. popping up, you're popping up on Facebook and on YouTube or, or wherever you're going live. It's a lot easier to grow that audience. It's much more difficult just to go with the podcasts um, if you don't have an audience. So I, I would still do it that way. I learned so much. I wouldn't be able to do what I'm currently doing if I hadn't started with live. Um, obviously like if, if you're really, really scared of live and it's just not what you want to do, that's, that's okay. But there are some huge advantages with that. And, and also like it's, it's, a, it is a great way of, of getting guests. Um, you know, it's just scary for some people, but some guests thrive on that as well. So yeah, don't knock it. Man, you know, it's funny. Yeah. There's a post uh, going around from one of our friends that we all know, probably Jennifer Navarrete. She's talking about like some of her guests come on a podcast because she's remote producing. Right. And says they don't like to see themselves in the own preview window. And we're like, what? Then tell them yeah. don't look at it. <laughs> She's like, oh, but they can't <laughs> help it because they need to see, you know, this, that and the third. How do we turn that off? And I was just like, man, listen, you're doing a lot of work. I would fire every one of those people and find somebody else. There's no shortage of people <laughs> who want to be on your show. There just isn't. Um, there's so many people out there. We we just uh, signed up for Podmatch, which is really cool to find people who are willing. I don't, me personally, I don't think it's worth hoops. It's worth hoops. It's worth the drama of going through the hoops to try to please somebody to come and be a guest on your show. They're coming to your house. I'm telling you, nobody in this chat will wear a shoe in my house. If you come to Hawaii, you come in bare feet. <laughs> you don't wear shoes in the house in Hawaii. And that's not, that's the rule. It's the rule in everywhere in Hawaii, but that's just the rule in general. I'm not going to change the rule because you're Oprah. I'd be like, Oprah, I know you got corns and bunions, but them, them <laughs> shoes got to come off, lady. Like, not in the house, right? 
you have to be strong enough to be like, I'm sorry, you can't be a guest if you can't do this because I need it to be this way in order to make you look your best. In order to make you uh, shine and make the audience, you know, vibrate with you, I need you to do it this way. And people refuse to do that. Oh, my guests won't wear headphones. Then they're not my guests. So simple. Yeah. Like, that is a dumb I, thing. I I'm not it's... coming on your show because I refuse to wear headphones. Yeah. <laughs> I, I totally agree with that, but I also think, too, that, like, I think sometimes, and I'm I'm guilty of this. No, you're too nice. As well, but, like, sometimes we get, I'm too nice, yeah, but, so, um, I'm definitely guilty of being too nice, but there's, I think sometimes we get, like, so locked, too, in the, the format of things that we forget that it, like, a lot of it is squishy, especially these days, like, so you could technically... Like, even with everything Doc just said, and I'm not disagreeing with it, but yeah, like, sure. I could have a guest that's really important to me who is like, for example, so we're planning, we're planning Leap, right? And the, the sessions for Leap are all live. They're all live sessions. And that we did that intentionally. It's worked out really well for us. But there's a couple of speakers who are in Australia and ECAM people are mm. like above, <clears throat> you know, go above and beyond. And they're like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll do this session. Or whatever. And, and we figured out a way to work it out for the format. So we're fine in this particular case. But I w also would have been totally fine to say, hey, because these, you know, these folks are in parts of the world where it's really difficult for them to be live at this particular time, I'm going to make an adjustment and we could have a couple of recorded sessions the event would still be highly impact impactful and we would still have the same level of success. It could be the same for your podcast episode where maybe there's a really important guest who, for whatever reason, I would push back if it's just nerves, but for whatever reason, they can, you know, they're not able to do a live format. Doesn't mean that you can't, you can't change the format of your show for that particular mm -hmm. session or think through how, how you can do it. I, you know, so that you, you're still, still able to make it work in I guess in the same way where I have a lot of like favorite podcasts who that are audio only podcasts right now. And I've been like thinking a lot about people who are trying to make that shift from like, I've had a long term yeah. podcast that's audio and I want to move into the video doing like what, what you're doing, Ian, I think is a really smart way for, for that side to like approach and get into it where it's like, maybe that's then like an exclusive special, like long form interview that's that's a youtube live or you know maybe it's like a special event where it's like okay podcast listeners like you know for all of my patreon members or you know membership we're going to do this like live special q a or like there's i think ways to play with the formats together that could evolve yeah. the the overall feel of your show yeah you definitely have to do some pre-records like, nope i'm an audio podcaster nope yeah nope well, i batch I or nope i'm like which is I, yeah. I think you can use both or and I, I think I think being being flexible is is really important, and I I think I'm I'm learning this with the 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 other launch, uh, with the other mm -hmm. podcast I'm launching because I think we take this for granted in in the space that we're in because yeah. like we've all got good cameras. We're all look, we're all wearing headphones. We're all being kind of, <laughs> you know, we're all being good, good, and we you know got yeah. nice microphones like in shots. Like I, okay, I, I I know Doc might. Prefer his microphone to mine, but it's it's a decent microphone. Oh no, I have the a, problem I have is a PR like, with my. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like some of the guests that I'm going to potentially have on the Smart ADHD podcast, then they're not in this world. They, I might have some experts who really know their stuff, but then they're not necessarily used to getting on camera and doing this kind of stuff. And so I've got to, and I can do my best to say, look, could you please wear headphones? Uh, could you like make sure you have a microphone? But the thing is, all, not all, they're not going to always be able to do that. And so I have to make a decision. Is what they're saying good enough for them to still come on? And the, and this is why actually living at the time that we're living in is, is really good because, you know, I've had guests um, relatively recently who have had on, 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 on a show, on, on a different show, and the, their audio wasn't that great. It was echoey. Well, I can use AI, I can use the likes of Descript, and it's not perfect. The, the studio sound is not perfect, but it's good enough to get rid of the echo and the and the and all those kind of things in the background. And if the content, if what they're saying is good enough, then sometimes you just have to, you know, let let, let that fly because uh, not everyone is technical. And, and I can say, look, okay, wear headphones, get, get a decent microphone, but um, not everyone's going to do that. So I think being flexible with that, being flexible with the time, uh, and although those things matter to me greatly, audio, great audio matters, all those things, I've sometimes, I've got to say to myself, Ian, look, okay, not everyone's quite like you. You've got to just 
let things let things slip a little bit and, and you can you do what you can afterwards. So I don't know what your thoughts on that are, but it's something I've been thinking a lot about recently. It's it's okay, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a way to do this, act. right? Okay, look, if I had someone who and I know different places are relatively large, but let's just say I had someone who I wanted to have on a show and they lived in, I don't know, let's say Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, and they don't have a studio or whatever, but they were just going to be really good. They were going to be a great person to talk to. I really want to get them on the show. I would call one of the people in the network and be like, fam, listen, uh, how's your studio? Is it, um, is it accessible? I have somebody I really want to record, but they don't know anything I'm just doing. Can, can you go to them? Or can they come to you, right? If they're in Hollywood, Florida, I can send Luis. I know he has a portable kit. You know what I mean? Like, I'll find a way to work it out. Send them to the radio station. A lot of places have co-working spaces with recording booths. There's WeWorks in so many towns with recording booths. There's no excuse. Uh, I'm sorry. Like, do you have an opportunity now <laughs> to make it good? And um, this headphones, they're, they're 15 bucks for the cheapest pair. Like, I'll just send it to them. Right. And that's how we did it back in the day when we first started doing Twit. Nobody had headphones and mics. So we always said a Logitech C900 back then and a Plantronics headset. And we sent it directly to their place so they could do their thing. And then we just had them box it up and send it back. And so we had like six of them that we used to send all over the country. I mean, if it's that, I mean, you have a way to make it good. You just do. So I don't it's think. A, yeah. 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 I think sending a microphone, like this is something that I've thought about, like if, like something like the Samsung Q2U microphone yes. is, is relatively expensive. Like if you, if you want, if you want to get a, if, if you're worried about a guest and their microphone setup, send them one of those. Okay. It's yeah. going to cost yeah. you, but it, it depends on how much you want to. So, yeah, guess, so, yeah. so what I'm bucks. saying is there's, there's compromise, there are ways around it. And, and yeah. if you, if you, if you want to know somebody in an area who's got a good studio, just, just email doc and it'll get you sorted out. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, we e have, the, e we have fam. the ecam fam it's so huge there's so many yeah. people that would be more than happy to help and they would that's learn something yeah. too because they would get an opportunity to do something <clears> that's <throat> a little bit out of their standard you know affairs so i do think there's just opportunity so yeah and and i i, I agree katie definitely you definitely want to be able to have the flexibility so we've done a pre-recorded show um uh, and i was going to mention this because i mentioned to whiskey yeah. pig in the chat earlier um oh, sorry the whistle pig i'm mixing up things <laughs> that's whiskey pig is a type of whiskey <laughs> that is freaking amazing by the way anyway i had to do a talk <laughs> this week and they wanted me to do a talk on live video i'm like cool so i'm all ready and they're like oh but can you pre-record your session and the whole time I could not get this session out because I'm like, I'm sitting here making a pre-recorded video about live video. This makes about as much sense <laughs> as screen doors in the submarine. And I, and I struggled through it. I finally got it done. I posted it. We go up. What happens? The platform eats it. So what I ended up having to do? My session live anyway. So, so you know, sometimes you, yeah, like you, you have to be flexible straight up. Yeah, you have to yeah. be flexible. And, and there's, sometimes there are like, there's, reasons for all of that as well so i i, I love kind of i i'm forcing i've been forcing doc to do more on like podcasting formats because although i do think that ours is awesome for a ton of different reasons i think i think really it comes down to like really understanding what your goals are and not being afraid to make changes for what's best for you as an individual as the as the podcast host and producer and mm. also what's best for your audience and at, like yeah. i think Many of us get lost in that these days because there's so many, there's, and particularly with AI tools, but there's so many tools out there and so many people that you're watching that are giving guidance and advice that sometimes it becomes really easy to end up with just like sitting, you know, hmm. sitting at your desk surrounded by, <laughs> by tools and gear and whatever else. And we've, and we've forgotten kind of the mission or what's important to us as individuals and what, you know, where, where the opportunities yeah. are. So I, that I would That's hate so to true. think that we would ever make a decision based on just because it's like, well, you know, well, we're a live streaming tool, so we need to do it live. No, we're doing it live because like we we believe in that format and it's important for our audience to engage with us. That may change. Like maybe, yeah. you know, maybe it changes and we have a different format or maybe we do short clips and then we also do a live episode. We and don't know. It's a large it's portion of our audience doesn't go live. The brand the <laughs> they show. just use the tool for other things. So, yeah, yeah it's super. It's oh, my and, God. And there's so a, there were different. There are different ways of doing it as well. So one thing I'm experimenting with 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 this new format is 
Be because link I, I wanted to make a big focus on LinkedIn. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but the problem is like I can I can upload the video to YouTube afterwards. So I've got the pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. It's slightly it is it's it's been slightly edited. That's great. I also upload that to Facebook. But LinkedIn, the maximum number of minutes for a LinkedIn video is 10 minutes. Yeah. Oh, or was it eight now. minutes okay, it or, eight. Or, yeah. or whatever it is it's, it's it's and so limited i thought okay let's let's try something new so i did this last week so i i powered up ecamm and i went live and i introduced like this this is um this is a uh i'm gonna play a pre-recorded video of the, the the last confident live marketing podcast if you have any questions i'm gonna be here in the chat so i so uh, so I then switched to a scene, played the video, and I went into the chat, and it was it yeah. went it went completely mad. I had I can't remember how many people I had live. It was it was a lot of people, and I changed I had changed the time as well. So this was during the day UK time, so that might have helped. I don't know, but uh, I, I think that's a, so. You've got to be careful with LinkedIn Live. I think you know I don't I wouldn't recommend just playing pre-recorded videos. But the fact that it was kind of like a hybrid, so I was starting it off. I think that's that's a good way to try try and things out. And you were out. clear about uh, what it was, like I so and yeah, yeah you were, you you know, you're um, offering something I, I, that was beyond just a video. So, and 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 so like I know I can see somebody's asked a question about um, Instagram, and I think I've I've I used to basically multi-stream everywhere. Um, I went to you know Facebook, YouTube. I even went to like Twitch and all these other places. And I think that was that was that was useful for me to learn how it all worked. And it, and at the time, I think it worked really well. But now I want to be a lot more intentional. That this is my my view now. I'm going to go live just to LinkedIn. Um, and I think with my community live, I haven't quite decided yet. But again, I think that might be LinkedIn and um, and possibly one other place, probably YouTube. I don't know, or maybe just LinkedIn. I haven't quite decided. But and I think with Instagram, I would just go live to Instagram. Um, be, and I think particularly because you have to stream in in portrait that that makes it easier because going mm -hmm. portrait you could go portrait everywhere but um, so just because you can doesn't mean you should and I think exactly. multi streaming is great <laughs> don't get me wrong but uh, I, and I think it's good for certain for certain things it, it's absolutely great we I did a I helped out with the um, we had this twenty four hour party for this book launch. I was involved with this um, book called the, the Most Amazing Marketing Book Ever that Mark Schaefer um, co-wrote with 34 authors. And I was one of the, I wrote one of the chapters and we had this 24 hour live stream. And for that, it, it totally made sense to go live lots of places because it was like a party and I had that kind of party thing, but you don't have to do that for everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it comes down to intentionality. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think it's really like, thinking through again like what what are your goals what like what are the best you know what are the best places to be able to accomplish that like what is the best format to be able to accomplish that yeah and again i just i love that you like you've been at it for so long that now you're in this like amazing place where you know what each of those platforms is going to do you know what each of the formats is going to do so now you're able to to really like implement and test and see what's working and not working so if you're watching this and you're like not there yet like it just takes time and practice to get to that point but then once you're there then yeah it's absolutely you know absolutely a matter of being able to kind of figure out what works best and what works best for you it's gonna be different for everyone so what works great for ian may not work at all well for us may not work well for, for anyone watching so yeah it's uh it's an interesting space that's for sure because there's lots of flexibility but you really need to know what you want to get out of it and what you know what's best for your audience and you know it's funny like i, I we have you know, the multi-streaming is one of our features that everyone absolutely loves. And I will say time and time again, as good as it is, you should not multi-stream. And it's it's two things. One, it bifurcates the audience. And being being that one person in the stream by yourself when you're having everybody else having a party, that's just disconcerting to the mind, right? Yeah. When you're the <laughs> one guy on LinkedIn and there's 400 people on YouTube, you just feel left out. And yeah, you could go to YouTube. Some people don't get that right away. So they're like, what is he yeah. talking about? This thing is fake. There's not all these people in the chat. Wh who is this Dan? Where is he coming from? Where is uh, Casino Game? Who's Hank Russell? <laughs> 
Like, because you can't see them. So you think this person <laughs> is faking. So you think you're doing yourself cool because you're making yourself be everywhere so more people can see you. That's what you're doing it for. Let's be honest. But the audience will feel weird when they're the one or two people in this one spot and everybody is somewhere else. So I think that's bad. And the second part is the behavior on every one of the platforms is different. You have no way to genuinely be on YouTube and on Instagram and on Facebook at the same time. The behaviors are completely different on all three platforms. So, yeah, I, yeah. people will do it because they cannot stop the vanity. But I honestly don't think you should do multi streaming. <laughs> It's yeah. just, I think that keeping your audience together in one spot, and if you lose some because that one person's somewhere else, at least you won't make them feel odd. Yeah. Or, like, again, like, think through the format. I, so Anna and Fulgens have been doing this really, I think, clever um, format where they do their tech check for their shows. So they do two live shows a week with us. And b- both those shows, in the, like, 30 minutes before the show goes live on YouTube... They do a tech check on LinkedIn where they, they're like LinkedIn live and they're getting ready and they take questions and they run through their scenes and they te- so that people know what a tech check sounds and feels like they're, you know, checking and make sure everything is looking and sounding good. But it gets them into a different platform is a different experience and it teases where people can find the show later. So it, you know, there's there's so many options, I think, I like out that. for all of us. And it's because you imagine cool someone possible. sleeping on YouTube. They do it on Twitch. But you're not going to go live and sleep on YouTube. I just don't think that's going to be the same thing they do on Twitch. But people do it on <laughs> Twitch. Like, they go live and they go to sleep. I'm like, why do people watch people sleep and donate money to them sleeping? Hey, but you know what? Hey, but, you know, whole different thing. <laughs> it's like, there's, there's like, you can you can watch eight hours on YouTube of brown or white noise it, to, to yeah. help you concentrate. <laughs> like, people upload yeah. these things. So it, nothing surprises me these days. Like, yep. No. Yeah, yeah, those are good. Uh, actually, a couple of our people did uh, relaxing piano music channels where they would just play, you know, music. And then I was like, let that stream run. And it works pretty good. So you'd be amazed. All right. I guess the one other question that we sort of have is you mentioned this thing about batching. Uh, uh, listen, I want to be straight. I have a struggle with that one because I think I'm very timely and I like to be on the energy of the time. But I definitely many a times are thinking to myself, oh, I wish I had a batch something because I need to put something and I just don't, you know, today is a day where I need to go like make a sandwich and a cup of coffee and don't move. <laughs> so like, <laughs> how how would you help me shake the whole uh, batching thing? And it's funny. And the reason why I say this, I did a, I did a new format the other day where I recorded and I said what I had to say in the beginning. It was supposed to be 20 minutes. It's 38. Um, And then I did my Q&A at the end. I chopped it yesterday in scenery because, hey, Ecamm. And one of the my top five things that I learned from being a creator over the last couple of years and one of them was be flexible and it came up today and this is really really funny that both of you guys said that but i think it's that's the big one i think everyone has to be flexible be ready to change at any given moment in time because my flexible statement was based off of april 22nd hey can't go live in my break with my group no more now what are you gonna do nothing just move it's not that hard for you to send an email hey people we gotta move and if they're your audience the way you say they are then they'll move. No one will blink an eye. But if you were, you know, smoking mirrors the last couple of years, you will be found out. So that's it. Anyway, how do you make me batch? Help me. Well, I, I, the first thing I would say is like, we're all different. So like what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you. But like, I, like this, this summer, we're, 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 we're going to, we're going to, we're going to Canada uh, for, for two weeks. Like, and I, I want to make sure that I'm not, when I'm out there, I'm stressing around trying to, you know, edit video. So, and I think the other thing that I find, the way I work is that I will get into the zone. Once I, so if I'm one, if I can kind of say one day a month or two days a month, I can get in the editing zone and I just hyper-focus and I get it done. That works really well for me. Whereas if I have to do like, uh, like an hour editing on one day and then I have to do it the next week or, or whatever, I just, I just find just batching it all works really well. And also, like, if you have a team of people, so I have a, a virtual assistant who I can, without, and that's why we've got it all in, in Notion. We've got every single step. So I can, I will edit. At the moment, I'm editing the video. Um, then she will go in, she'll 
correct the, any obvious errors in the transcript. So it always misspelled Descript. You need to have a chat with Descript because it keeps on misspelling <laughs> Ecamm. Oh, they, and, they also misspell their own name, too. <laughs> well, there you go. Talk about Descript. And it, it, and it, mis Descript. it misspells me as well. Oh, uh, there, yeah, there you go. Yeah. It spe spells my name. It's just outrageous, you know? Uh, yeah. But <laughs> it's just like, so like there's all these little steps. And I suppose it depends on like how much you want to do. I think if you, if you batch... And if you have all these processes, you can do so much more. So like with this system, I can now get a, like a full blog post. I've, I've created um, a, a custom GPT um, that I can just f give it uh, the, the transcript from Descript. And because it's shorter, these are 20, 25 minute episodes, it will then turn that into show notes for me. Um, and then I can, I, and, and I think I'm okay with, I, I'm not a big fan of blog posts generated by AI, but I think with the show notes, I think that's perfectly okay. It gets, and, um, yeah, it gets close enough. And, yeah. and, uh, and then I've got the, so it just makes every step really easy. And then in terms of like um, video snippets and all that kind of stuff, the batching side of things just means I can get it done. Whereas if I had to do that, if I had to do a little bit every single day, I just, I think I'd just lose it. I think I just have <laughs> well, to. You you know get into the get into the flow of it you know yeah see what i did there you're you're also doing a really <laughs> i love what you did there <laughs> you're also doing a really cool thing though that we should shout out that is related to batching so for your new show and i know this because i was just a guest so <laughs> but you actually recorded two different episodes oh, at yeah. the same time which i think is really clever so like if you're going to choose batching as as the option you're going to record your episodes Get clever about it. I, what was really nice about this as a guest experience was Ian was like, hey, this season is all about studios. And then the following season, we we're talking all about um, like your journey and confidence and and kind of the the more strategy, big picture side. So here's how much time I need for you to come on. And I have all of these questions for this mini episode. And then we're going to switch and we're going to go into the. And it was a really seamless flow. And then you had two episodes for the one recording time. But you and then, yeah. you know, so you I'd checked forgot, off next forgot, season at the same time. I'd forgotten about that. Thanks, Katie. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. That, that was the other the other advantage in doing shorter ones is like, I think most guests are happy, like booking an hour, maybe a little bit yeah. more. So it just yeah. means that we can get two done. Uh, yeah. at, at one time and then that oh, it's just great because I look at my spreadsheet now and I've got I've got I've, I've interviewed three guests I've now got six episodes yeah. uh, across <laughs> two <laughs> seasons yeah. so I, I, I think that brilliant. that's great yeah isn't that See, great I told and, like, you you were a genius why are you playing it <laughs> like yo that is brilliant <laughs> oh my god I'm, I'm floored <laughs> yeah yeah. And again, like just because I, I again and I know we're like kind of preaching to the choir here probably, but I you can like even if you are live streaming your episodes doesn't mean you can't batch other like processes or batch promo yeah. videos or but like so there's like there is a lot of like batching and prep that you can do in yeah. different ways. So don't think to yourself like, oh, I can't I can't do any kind of like planning or batch or like batch processes because my show is a live show. This show is a live show and we do a ton with AI and batching yeah. and getting everything into like a saved folder to be able to use in different ways throughout the year. I, so it I th I think you need you need to kind of work out like what's your what is the which is the the elements of the show that you want to have on a fixed schedule? Mm -hmm. Like, so if, I don't know what it is for, for you guys, but like for me, with the the previous um, version of the show, it was the podcast. I and I don't necessarily. I, I think now I I would allow myself to be more flexible. But what I I wanted to I, I made a promise to myself that I was going to make the podcast every single week because yeah. I really struggled with consistency, and I'm really proud of the fact that I went from May 2019 to middle of last year with, without missing one. And the only reason I was able to do that was to batch with the live show. So sometimes I would do one per week, sometimes I'd do two, which always meant I would be able to have enough shows in the bag to be able to have that weekly um, podcast. Um, yeah. So you just get, you've got to work out what, what works for you, what works for your audience. It's got to work for you because at the end of the day, like if, if you reach burnout or if you if you if you get sick of what you're talking about the, the audience are going to get a, a, a raw deal out of it so you've got to yeah. it's got to work for you you've got to get a schedule that works for you um but yeah the batching side of things just frees you up so much i think 
You know, it's yeah. funny. Uh, Sally does this thing where she does her show, Sally Cousins, and she batch records four one hour episodes on one day. And yeah, she, she has like a, a recording party day. <laughs> yeah, she does them live. And some people will sit there and come to every single one. Some people are like, hey, I can make one. I can leave, come back. She's still going to be here. I'm going to just pick up value where I can. And she releases those, uh, you know, each additional week on the way through. But she literally batch records all the live streams on one day a month. And I just like, that's a crazy format. But, you know, she has a team. She has her editors. They get in there, chop it up. The finished ones are good. The live ones are good. And if you know Sally, she's cracking them laughing the whole time. So it's very energetic. And how she stays, she is just as energetic if you're the first guest or the last. Because I've been oh, on the yeah. same day with Anna Fulgens. And she start with them and ending with me because of our time zones are closer. And she's still cracking up by the time she gets to mine. And I'm like, girl, like, what level of caffeine do you have? It's different from mine. <laughs> yeah. I need it. I need that. But Sally is so awesome. And it's it's, it's really amazing how, yes, you can do that. So, um, yeah, super, super interesting. And thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for joining us today, Ian. And if you haven't yet, please, please go over and check out Ian's website, both podcasts. <laughs> you, can, you can work your way now through both podcasts. And uh, yeah, and hopefully this gives you all some confidence that it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to test and play. You don't have to lock yourself into one format and feel trapped for the, your <laughs> yeah, entire podcasting yeah, yeah. journey. There's there's tons of flexibility and ton and people are doing really cool, different things. So keep an eye on what everyone else is doing and see if maybe some of what they're doing might work really well for you. There's literally an answer to every question you have about doing this stuff, and it's a matter of going to do it. And then here's going to be the crazy part. You are going to get seven, eight different answers for the same question. Yeah. <laughs> My thing recently <laughs> has been, at some point, you just got to pick one because this is a you decision. Yep. You're literally, yep. uh, not you specifically, but most people are looking for someone to give them the answer that's going to just unlock the thing. But you know what? I've played the games where, you know, there's a walkthrough available online and you just do it. And those games are no fun. The games that are really fun are the ones that you have to struggle and win because then when you win, you do the rah, you know, rage yell, and you can go back <laughs> in. But, like, if you just have all the answers, it's no fun. Uh, my dad used to have this dumb thing about, you know, like, nobody would ever go to a strip club. You walked in and everybody was just naked. Like, it, that's not how it works. <laughs> and I, I thought that was the weirdest thing, and I never understood the way he said it. with his weird nudist colony at that point. <laughs> with, his, with, with his weird Korean accent, it didn't make sense. But it does make sense. Like, part of the reveal is part of the deal, right? Burlesque is part of yeah. the deal. And it's like, no one would just see that. So you can't just, you know, everyone says, well, how come Apple doesn't just release all these products at once? And because reveal is part of the deal. That's, you know, is what it is. So anyway, yeah. thank you. Let's, uh, let's, we, everybody. Everybody knows how to find Notorious IAG, as I still always yeah, call him. Yeah, <laughs> IAG.me slash podcast. Thanks for dropping that into the comments for our live studio audience, <laughs> did we? Do we have anybody um, from your team was in the chat today? I didn't even look. Did anybody come in to represent their team from camp? Camp CC1 in the building? <laughs> anyway. Uh, oh, yeah. We had some we had some yeah. campers in the, in, the, in the chat. And we should say, if you're listening or watching this later, because we are multi-formatted, <laughs> you can always join our live studio audience. We are here. I'm going to say most Tuesdays because we actually do we do take seasonal breaks now. So we do take a couple of breaks here and there. But And we're going to be in um, L.A. next Tuesdays, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, at 12 p.m. Eastern here on YouTube. You can catch the live studio audience. And then you can get your questions answered <laughs> after the show wraps. So it's a good time. It's a good time. Oh, my God. It's so, so good. Um, yeah, so Eden was on Ian's team. There you go. Do we keep it? I like to buy a yeah, vowel. It's, go. and next time we're going to name the team, I like to buy a <laughs> vowel. And we just get all the vowel people, Andy and Ian <laughs> and Eden. <laughs> uh, Evie, baby. Wait, sometimes Evie. Evie. <laughs> sometimes Guys, Evie. This, this has been like absolutely uh, freaking amazing. I really appreciate re uh, English again. I appreciate you, brother. Like, man, it's really weird how you cross a couple oceans and lose how to speak English. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and oh my god dude that tea is so good like i'm i'm like halfway through that bag already it is super delicious oh i'm glad you're enjoying it 
Yeah, Ian this, sent this us is... the best tea. I've been I've been hoarding it. I I'm really bad. My my kids were like, "Can I have some tea?" I was like, no. "I don't have any. There's no tea." <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I got to have some Arizona to... ninety nine cents a can. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Here you can have these teas. Can't I'm gonna have to bring out some more, aren't I? Like uh, <laughs> uh, later this year. We'll right, yeah. The, funny, really the funniest good. thing is like he put a big old note on it. Doc, do not put any milk in here. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> So I listen. I listen. I can, you smell it. It smells so great. It's so Earl Grey. I like, want to do it, but Ian said don't do it. So I'm like, okay. Floral, yeah. Okay. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent. <laughs> no milk. No milk. Yeah, I should lift in tea for the kids. It's so true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, we, we bypassed our, our final read. So, Luis, pop it back up again so, so we don't have to record it later. There you go, Doc. Onward to you. All right, gang. If you want to catch the flow, you can find us at flow.ecam.com. This will take you to our website. Our website is phenomenal, by the way. Thank you, Podpage. You can go there and you can leave us a question. You can leave us a voicemail. You can leave us a review. This also, if you decide you're ready to follow the podcast, subscribe not the word anymore. It will take you to all of your podcasts, get in places where you can press a button and make sure you never miss another episode of The Flow. This and every episode of The Flow has been brought to you by our lovely sponsors. And we want to give a big shout out to Captivate. This is where we host our show. Captivate is amazing. There's a lot of places you can host your show, but Captivate will help you grow that sucker. So make sure you go and check out Captivate.fm. It is the move. Just trust me. It's the best. Andy in the chat right now is saying it's the best. So listen to Andy if you don't listen to me. He's cuter anyway. <laughs> Always listen to Andy. Always listen to Andy. Always listen to Andy. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Well, this is I so think good. We answered. I'm just scrolling through quickly to make sure we didn't miss any <clears throat> questions. I think we I, I were did, answering most We got of most of it. I, I do want to double back on the whole thing about uh, streaming your podcast vertically. No one's oh, no, vertic- one, no vertical, one has yeah. it. I mean, Ian covered it a little bit, but I don't think right now I know of anybody who's doing a vertical podcast. If you want to be first, knock yourself out. But, you know, um, Again, I just don't see IG as a place where I'm going to sit down and listen to a podcast, but that's just me. If you can make your audience do it or your audience tells you that they're ready to do it, that's the answer. I think when these new things come out, sometimes you have to ask your audience, hey, would you guys be down to do a couple of test episodes that are like this and see what they say? Because here's the problem with yeah. tools. And I, I just figured this out while, while Ian was talking about it today. It literally came to my head. I had a full ass <laughs> visual. I am going to the Home Depot because my Amazon package box knife is running low. So I need new refills for this, right? And Luis will tell you, because he's been to Home Depot with me, I need to go straight to that aisle and get what I came to get and leave. If I don't, more Milwaukee (laughs) stuff is coming home. Okay? So the worst thing you could do is walk into Home Depot and not know what you want. It will be very, very, (laughs) very expensive. Right? That is how these tools are. Women say, what about this AI tool? What about this AI tool? Listen, what do you need? What are you trying to solve? If you start looking at the tools with what I am trying to solve, you will walk in, you will get three paint rollers and some paintbrush cleaner, and you will walk out. But if you walk in open minded, you got a new vanity. You got uh, some stuff for your washing machine, make it smell good. You bought new trash bags. You got all kind of crap. Some of these tools you have unopened in your garage. Every man in here who's a tool person has tools unopened in their garage right now. Then tell me I'm lying. Mm-hmm. So just think about that. And no, I think that's true. And Don't do it. If you don't need to do it, don't do it. Ask your audience if they're cool, roll with it. If they say, I don't know about that, then don't know. It's not your show. It's theirs. It's very true. Very true. Very you know, true. It's interesting to see very what happens with, with the vertical space, but I agree with that. You never know. It's like going to the grocery store when you're hungry. It's 100%. True. It's true. Oh, my God. <laughs> that's if my, I go to Costco that's hungry, to. Costco hungry is evil. Never, never. go Stop outside $1.50 <laughs> yeah. hot dog first, because if you walk in that joint hungry, oh, my God. <laughs> it's over. It's over. You buy all the tea. <laughs> you buy too much tea. Oh my goodness. Not, well, thank uh, you, uh, Ian. Uh, and thank you to Flow Riders. 
Dude, you guys are amazing. Unrelated, if you're near Costco, get Amy Lou Chicken Burgers. Amy Lou Chicken Burgers at Costco are freaking phenomenal. They also sell them at Whole Foods. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know that. <laughs> guys, this has been great. <laughs> <laughs> it is on. I will get ready to do some streaming, and we will see you guys in two weeks. Um, we don't even have a pre-recorded for next week. Maybe... Maybe we can hotel one. I don't know. It depends on the, yeah. the Wi Fi yeah, we'll situation. See. We, might, we might hotel, but we're not promising. It's all right. Yeah. We can come back in a couple weeks. I might be drunk. Anyway. <laughs> <See? laughs> Flow Riders, you guys rock. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, IAG. I appreciate you guys. And everybody, please make sure you're following your uh, email box. I do not want to hear anybody saying, I didn't know about camp. It's coming. It's coming. Just go go to, go to the placeholder page and be ready. Just have look at it every day because it's coming. We're not going to tell you. We're just going to cancel on. And it's going to sell out in five minutes, and you're going to be sad. So be ready. <laughs> anyway, guys, you know what we say around here? Flow riders, out, out. <laughs>